as the sun rises on a new IndyCar season. Tony Kanaan is ready to go back to work. The 15-year veteran returns to KV Racing and welcomes a new teammate, the closest thing to a brother that he's ever known. But it's a bittersweet weekend for Kanaan, as he'll race for the first time since the passing of his friend and former teammate. In the next 36 hours, Tony and his team will practice, qualify, and race in the 2012 IZOD IndyCar Series season opener. It's Tony Kanaan on IndyCar 36. It's just after eight in the morning on a late March Saturday in St. Petersburg, Florida. It's opening weekend for the IZOD IndyCar Series. Tony Kanaan and his fiance, Lauren, are on their way to the racetrack. Good morning, guys. The 2004 IndyCar champion has 15 career wins and is one of the most popular drivers in the series. Today, TK is giving his new teammate and old friend, Rubens Barrichello, a ride to the office. Taxi. Na outra porta. Taxi. <laughs> to the track, please. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think he's going to do good. I think he's, uh, he wasn't in 19 years in F1 because he was lucky. You know, he's very capable of. He's going to make some rookie mistakes, I'm pretty sure. It's tough to call a veteran that has most Grand Prix done in F1 a rookie, but it's a different series. I'm here to help him and uh, I'll do whatever I can. And I'm pretty sure today will be, it will be much better. Thank you. Anytime, Rubens. We are an hour away from, uh, from the first session. So uh, on Saturday morning, it's the most important session before qualifying because it's the last one. We want to be in the top six. So I think uh, that's the plan. And uh, we expect to have a good day. Kanan has always loved St. Pete. He has six top five finishes here and has completed every lap the past seven years. But this weekend marks the first time he'll race since the passing of his friend and former teammate, Dan Weldon. St. Pete was Weldon's adopted hometown, and he won this event back in 2005. So we keep our eye on the 33 car, Brian Briscoe, as they head to turn number 10. I had a chance to win. Dan was second. Briscoe was first. Two laps to go. I found the gap, and I went for it. Tony Kanaan trying to make the move to the inside. They touch it. Brian Briscoe hits the tire barrier in front of us. We hit, took Briscoe out, but I didn't leave the corner fast enough. And here comes Dan. Tony Kanaan bustling his way past Briscoe. He will take the lead. No, it's Weldon who will have the lead. Dan Weldon brings it down the front straightaway. Your winner at the Honda Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, Dan Weldon, picks up the victory, followed closely by his teammate, Tony Kanaan. It was one, two, three, four for the Andretti boys, which never happened again. After a quick good morning to his crew, Tony arrives in time for the team meeting, but first takes a phone call from Brazil. Eu mando a foto do troféu, tá bom? Eu vou mandar a foto do troféu para você, tá? Sorry, that was my son. Yeah, he said, no, he said, uh, I said, I'm qualifying today and I'm racing tomorrow. All right, just uh, take a picture of, the tro of my trophy that you're going to win. And, uh, and then when you're ready to come home, just bring it to me. I'm like, sure. <laughs> so I told you I'm going to win the trophy, but yeah, no pressure. Tony began racing at age eight, dominating the Brazilian karting circuit with the support of his father. But his dad passed away when Tony was just 13. The two had an emotional talk the night before he died. He called me up and uh, I went there to talk to him and he looked at me and says, look, man, um, just wanted to know that if anything ever happens to me, I want you to take care of my, your mother and your sister, but also do not ever give up racing because it's something that I think you're really talented. Nearly 25 years later, Tony is still racing, and tomorrow he will make his 182nd consecutive start, easily the longest active streak 
in the IZOD IndyCar Series. It's now 9.45 and time for the final practice. IndyCar drivers are used to the traffic on the racetrack, but dealing with the crowd in the paddock is another story. After a quick 30-second commute, Tony arrives for practice, but first stops to talk with the third Brazilian in the series, Elio Castro Neves. Soon it's time to get to work, and like most athletes, Tony has a routine he has to follow before getting into the car. I always get in from the left side of the car. I always put my left shoe first. So if I forget, for some reason, I take both out, put them back in. I used to have a lucky underwear, but that's long gone. It got old. Welcome back to the streets of St. Petersburg, Florida, as we get set for this final practice session. Teams use the one-hour session to make sure everything is ready for qualifying. Tony Kanan is next in a minute 3.300. Speeds don't count here, but you still want to go fast. Practice has ended. Next up for the IZOD IndyCar Series will be qualifying this afternoon. Their goal is to qualify in the top six. So being down on the speed chart is disappointing. But Tony knows he and the team must remain patient. You know, we're 12, three and a half tenths from P1. So when you think about that, you, you think that, you know, you're 12, you gotta make a huge change and you don't, so you gotta be really focus on not overdoing it because then you get worse. So it's a, it's a fine line that we're gonna have to define right now. Final adjustments are being made for qualifying, which is now less than two hours away. IndyCar 36 is brought to you by Firestone, the first name in Indy racing. During the off-season, 37-year-old Tony Kanan competed in a different race, the Ironman World Championships in Hawaii, racing on two wheels instead of his normal four. You know how many finish lines I crossed? Probably more than a thousand. And that one was really special because for the first time in my life, it was just me. I didn't depend on anybody. I didn't rely on anybody. If I was going to fail that day, I was going to fail because I didn't do my job right. I didn't control myself. I didn't train right. Whatever reason it was, it was going to be me. Back at the racetrack, Tony must rely on others. And this year, he's been reunited with engineer Eric Cowden and crew chief Jeff Simon, two key members that were part of his 2004 championship. The impact they have on Tony, it's like a calming effect. Tony. Uh, he, he gets wound up uh, pretty easily, and, uh, uh, but, and, they, and they, they won their championship with him, they know him well, and uh, they know how to get the best out of him. You guys have got the best communication. Oh, well, I would hope so. I would hope so. No, no, I'm just simply <laughs> saying it's noticeable. It's at a different level. You know, almost before you come in, he's decided what he's going to do. Then you wow. say something, and it's exactly what he was going to do. And then, Twice, I just shook my head, and he knows what to do. <laughs> he knows that I'm looking out for his best interest, and, and uh, kind of just all he has to worry about is, is uh, driving. So hopefully that's part of what's going to make a successful relationship. Eric is a fantastic engineer. Him and Tony seem to have a lot of success when they get together. He has a real, uh, a real way with handling Tony, being the Brazilian that he is. And uh, it, it's worked out really well. With the pressure to qualify mounting, Tony tries to lighten the mood. Okay, either gonna be good or I'm gonna come in and you run. <laughs> you put it all on the driver's shoulders uh, when it comes to road street course. P4. TK bounced up to four after being on the outside looking in. Tony Kanai, he advances to round number two. Moving on to the next round, TK is one step closer to his goal making the Firestone Fast Six. 
with two minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in round number two. Knockout qualified. You got this lap and one more lap. This lap and one more. Kanan, Dario, Rahal, and Conway as of now Man. on the outside looking in. You're P9 now. This is it. Checkered flag. Tony Kanan did not move on to the Firestone Fast Six. Where did I end it up? P9. And then one little thing. Because you're searching in the edge. He was right away. Sorry, it's half a second. Hey, come on. Tomorrow's like Jimmy said. Tomorrow's a long time. Oh, but yeah, you make the fast six. It's not going to be any different. I don't, I, I, because I had that. And that's what I don't like. If, if All right. I had it. Right. You and Learn from it. We've missed by less than a tenth of a second. I mean, I don't think I have room to be upset. Results at the end of the day, the day are very selfish things. But to me, uh, I'm looking at a big picture, and uh, honestly, I'm just happy to be here. Good luck. <laughs> After just missing his goal, Tony will line up ninth tomorrow, while Rubens will start two rows back in 13th. And as the crews prepare the cars for Sunday's race, Tony and the other drivers spend time with the fans at the autograph session. Hey, Tony, how Hi. are you? Good, and you? That's the best part of my, uh, my weekend, apart from being in the car. I think the interaction with the fans, seeing little kids, older people, young people, everybody wearing your shirt asking you to sign. I mean, I find amazing that uh, people can sit in line for hours just to get your signature. <laughs> As Saturday night falls in St. Petersburg, Tony's day is still not done. Tonight, there's a dinner for his Brazilian sponsor. I can't thank Apex enough. I hope you guys enjoy this, uh, this evening and tomorrow. It's a very unique experience, so people have no idea what to expect. And uh, I hope that uh, when you guys come out of here tomorrow, you guys understand a little bit more about IndyCar. After 13 hours, Tony's workday is finally over, and he can get ready for tomorrow, race day. The green flag falls in 19 hours. Five hours before the start of the race, and the sun rises to reveal a wet track, thanks to some overnight rain. But the weather has passed, and it will be a beautiful day in St. Petersburg. Teams and drivers get one final warm-up to make sure everything is ready for the race. But midway through the session, TK has a problem. So TK has spun. Does that look like he's made any contact? I'm glad that things happen in warm-up, so you don't have to, uh to address it in the race, so I, I'm not I'm not nervous at all. I think we addressed the problems that we had, we, we fixed them, and then we're ready to go. After a team strategy meeting, it's time for one final meet and greet with some sponsors. What time is the drivers' meeting? Ten. We do have five minutes. Hello, how are you? Pictures with everybody. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming. Got it? Sorry. Hey, Tony, he can sign and smile. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys in the podium. That's mine. That's my shirt. Dealing with the sponsors, dinners, appearances, autograph session, meetings. Family, friends, guests, that's all part of it. But what we're there for is to drive the car. For TK today, Father, I ask your blessing. I ask for your, that you'll give him a good race, a safe race, and we thank you for a new season. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Let's be today. I love race mornings. I love that butterfly in my stomach. I love that feeling of, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I wanted, I know what to do. And that's what makes me keep racing. 
With the start now just 20 minutes away, Tony shares an emotional moment with Holly Weldon. It was very emotional. When you see the sister of one of your best friends that is no longer here looking at you in the face and hugging you and crying and, and telling you to be careful, I knew exactly what was going on in, through her head. Finally, after a long weekend and an even longer off-season, it's time to go racing. The 2012 Eyes on IndyCar Series is green. laps into the race, and Tony is running seven. A caution flag comes out. Catherine Legg slowing on the course on the front straight. Some teams make the split decision to pit, including Kanan. James Jakes is into the wall. The full course caution has come out, and that now has played into the hands of the drivers that pitted early. So it looks like now Briscoe, Dixon, Hunter Ray, among many others, will have to come in as the full course caution comes out. That very likely means that Tony Kanaan will take over the lead when we come back. So the early decision has paid off. After just 20 laps, Tony finds himself in the lead. 80 laps to go until victory lane. IndyCar 36 was brought to you by Firestone, the first name in Indy racing. The early pit stop strategy has worked, and after just 20 laps, Tony is out front and will lead the field when they restart the race. Now the question is, uh, is anybody gonna take this time? Yeah, the pits are open now, pack up, stay out, though. Stay out. Oh. 
by engine time. Oh, oh, Tony Kanaan oh, has come to a stop. Let's go to uh, Jake Query. Jake. It is Tony Kanaan just underneath the Firestone Bridge, that right-handed bend that is turn number three. And Kanaan's car apparently has just come flat to a stop. We run out of battery, guys. Heartbreak for TK. He was poised to take over the lead, but instead now the car sits at a stop. Hey, Eric, uh, we're probably going to go left down here for sure, but um, I'm in gear. I can't get out of gear. I don't think I'm going to be able to, uh, to do anything, but uh, sorry, but we're going to be in the lead. Tony Kanan is done. He is waving goodbye to the fans at this point. We, we're having the alarm since lap one. It was off low battery, yeah, low battery, it, it low goes, battery, and then it just died. You guys gonna get more than 36 hours now? I think we had much bigger problems in life than just dropping out of the race. Let's keep thinking about that, and that's all I can think about it. It's always an action. <laughs> there is no point of dwelling to myself why or this or that. I mean, it's done. What's done is done. Since at the end of last year, I promised myself that I was not gonna get down in situations like that because I think life teaches a lot in the last race of the year what a big problem is. Elio Castroneves will raise the fist. He's the winner on the streets of St. Petersburg. So Elio wins the season opener. And Rubens finishes 17th in his first IndyCar race. During his post-race celebration, Elio pays tribute to Dan Weldon. A very touching, fitting way to end it as he climbs the fence to the opposite side Pats his heart and points to the sign that says Dan Weldon Way. I got to a point that uh, I asked myself, especially after Dan passed, if I was doing for me what I was doing for my dad. And up until then, I don't think and that, that even, even had crossed my mind. Although I thought I was doing for him, I think I'm doing for myself. So it's on to the next race and the Iron Man of the IndyCar series will be there, just like his dad and Dan would have wanted him to.